my talk is about building a Python profiler in 25 lines of code. I changed it a bit from the title because I thought it was cooler. So a little bit about me, like uh, Amit said, I'm a data engineer at Bluevine. I'm involved with the PyWebIL community. It's a monthly meetup. If you haven't been there, uh, look it up on Meetup. It's really nice. And I help, I help, I help organize PyCon, uh, the last few PyCons, and uh, not this one. And uh, you can find me at NoMelf or at my website. So let's talk a bit about Python profiling. So what is, a profi what is profiling? Uh, the definition is the profile is a set of stat statistics that describe how often and for how long various parts of the program executed. So this is maybe some of you can understand, but we'll, we'll see a live example. It will help you help you get it. Um, in Python, we have two two built-in modules for that, which is a bit confusing. So I'll say I'll, I'll mention them. One of them is Profile, which is an early version, and is pure Python. And the other one is C Python, uh, C Profile, which is a C extension for Python. It's just faster, but they do the exact same things. Now let's look at what it does. So, profiling demo. Okay, so we have a foo file here. Okay, it's big enough. Um, so, uh, this script, what it does, it uh, does a superpower, <laughs> it does a power three times, uh, and put it in the result. Then, count digit takes the number, convert it to a string, and then returns the number of elements, meaning the number of digits. So if we run it, I don't know if you're surprised, but it takes quite long, quite long time to run, right? Didn't finish yet, didn't finish yet. Nine seconds, well, at home it took me six and a half seconds, so maybe the computer is a little excited. Um, okay, so, so, so it takes, so, um, what do you think? What was the what was the problematic function? Superpower or count digits? Who thinks it's superpower? Near, okay, I remember that. Who think uh, count digits? Okay, I think we have somewhat of a tie. Now we have the profiler to show us the culprit. So we're using minus m to run it as a module and see profile. And we can, okay, let's just run it like that. And later we can also sort it. Who's gonna be right? Okay, so, oh, you're seeing what I'm seeing? Superpower takes less than a second, but count digits is very heavy, apparently, on the CPU. So, uh, it's a bit surprising, right? I didn't, when I ran it, it was, a, I found it by accident. I tried to find something that, I, haven't di I even didn't think about doing this demonstration, but I was surprised by the results, so, so I thought I'll, I'll ask the crowd also. Um, so it's, it's pretty slow, right, count digits? I guess converting, look, it's a lot of digits, right? It's like 600,000, know, almost 700,000 digits. So how do you think, can we do it? Who, who, who remembers math? Uh, well, how can you do it faster? I didn't know, I looked it up online. Maybe you guys can know. Log? Log 10, right, exactly. So let's run our log 10 for optimized. And we get a much faster result. You can see less than one second. And you're the hero of the day in your company. And you're happy you came to, to this lecture. Um, so let's go, let's go back. So how does, how does the profiler work, right? We, we, we took like a, a snapshot of what it can do, but that's not the topic of the lecture. We're going to build one, but so so how does it work? So Python is a very like has a great introspective capabilities, and you can really see the whole stack from inside a Python process. You can really know where you are the whole time the process the process runs. So there's a demo for that as well. So if we run, um, so that, that's, that's our code, stack access. What you do is we just call the current frame uh, function from sys module, 
and it brings you all the frames from all the different um, threads that are up. We have only one thread here. Um, so it brings the, the, whole, uh, the, the, the whole call stack. Then we go and take that call stack and use the traceback module in order to extract the actual stack. And we just print it to screen. So if we run that, So we can see that we started in our, like the, the initial scope was module, and we ran the bar function. Then our scope was the bar function, we ran show stack, and in show stack we ran the loop, and then we printed the output. So it's really, really easy to access the stack, a lot easier than I thought. Um, so, that, so that's one part of building a profiler. Uh, next one, we need to, like, w so we know how to uh, get, get the stack, but it will be funny if we'll uh, call a function to get the stack in each function we're running, right? So Python uh, has a built-in uh, functionality for that, uh, in C in, that, that exposes, exposes the ability to access the stack, to, to, to call a function that will access the stack, um, and that's called deterministic profilers. Uh, we'll talk about statistic profiler in a second. So what the set profile function does, it, it's triggered every time a function or line of code is called, and then we can capture the stack, right? Um, or in set trace does the exact same thing, but just only on a function call. So when the callback gets called, we record the stack for later analysis. And let's see a demo of this as well. So these are deterministic profiling because we're, we're using, like we know that each time, uh, that, that for each function, this profiler is going to run and record, record what it's done. So let's call set profile. Okay, so we can see that, and that this is the function sys set profile. And what it does, it gets a, gets a method or a function called profiler that we defined here. The profiler receives the call stack from, from set profile, yes? So it receives the call stack, the event type, so uh, Python can uh, differentiate between, uh, like, like you, get, you get a signal also when the function ends and when it starts, and if it's a C function or regular Python function, and furthermore, the argument. The argument here will be the function itself that was called. So let's run this code. So we see that the function that was called here is print. The line that was executed is hello world, right? And this is, this is it. And this is the output of the hello world. So we, we have a trigger. Like we know how to trigger the uh, catching the stack. We, we know how to get the stack itself. Now another type of profiler, oh sorry. First, I want to talk about the disadvantages of deterministic profile, profilers. So what do you think in production system? For example, I'd love to know how my system is running in production at all time, but uh, there is a disadvantage to running it. What is it? Right, so, so, you, have, so you have a certain uh, overhead for every function call, you're gonna capture it, so you, had, you have more code running. So we can see that if I run the bar method, Let's see it for a second before. So if I run bar, this is, this is just a loop that runs two million times and call the function. And if I'll call it uh, without the profiler, it will be almost two times faster than if I'm calling it with the profiler. Let's see profile. Right, so we have, we have a big difference between using the profiler and not using it. But on the other hand, if we go back to the presentation, most programs doesn't have so many function calls. So, so it's not that big of a deal, I think. And, um, and also because Python is an interpreted language, and, and I, quote the, I quote the documentation, the interpreted nature of Python tends to add so much overhead to execution the deterministic profiling said to only add small uh, processing overhead in typical applications. 
So in, generally speaking, Python is not a very fast language. Don't hate me for that. And um, and the because it's interpreted and it and it does a lot of inspections anyway. So the using the profiler doesn't add so many um, so many extra time to the to the run of the program. Now, um, but still, if you, if we want to get if we want to be able to really run it in production without fear of performance, performance degradation, we can look at statistical profiling. So a statistical profi profiler just sample the program on a given interval. So you can choose how many samples you do, and it will be as fast or as slow as you, as you tell it. Um, it has less overhead than deterministic profiling, of course. And uh, we're going to see how to implement it. So if you guys know that you can send um, you can tell the OS to send you a signal every once in a while, and you can catch that single and signal and then uh, capture the stack. So let's see a demo of that as well. That's cool. So we have the timer file. Um, so here what we do, we just make a, we, we register a signal to the SIG alarm um, OS signals, and we put the handler in, so it will call this handler. We set the timeout, which will be three seconds, and uh, we do a URL request. So the idea here is to limit, and I don't know if you encountered it, when your URL request is uh, getting stuck at the server side, you don't get back and can make your whole program stack. So this is one way to, to handle that. So if it's not returning in three seconds, then we're going to throw an exception. If not, we're just going to nullify the alarm itself. So and to run it, we need to have, have you seen I'm running it in localhost. So to run it, we also have a server script here. This is a sleeping socket. It receives the request and then doesn't do anything with it. And we can run the timer file. So it received the connection, going to sleep, and after three seconds, the OS sent me a signal, and I do, and I throw an exception to to release myself from the from the socket. Um, so I think we have all the components we need to build a statistical profiler ourselves. So we're going to build one in 25 lines of code. It's very exciting. I was very happy when I reached that number, it's like a, a very nice one. Um, I don't hear excitement in the crowd, though. It's a little disappointing. Yeah, excited? OK, OK. So originally, I thought about coding it live, but, but I thought it would be a big mistake if I'll do that. So I just wrote it up in advance. Uh, let's scale this one. OK, so uh, we have three files, two demo files, and the profiler. So just to see that I'm not lying to you guys. We have 25 lines of code. And we have the S profiler. It can be a simple profiler or a statistical profiler, how you'd like to, to interpret it. And this is it. I think I'll make the code a little smaller so you can see more. So, um, so the main function, the start function, is the entry point. So it's going to get an interval. Our interval here is uh, 5 milliseconds. We're going to assign a signal, a signal sig prof. Actually, it's sig signal profiling. It counts the amount of time the, the process runs, like the Python interpreter runs, and the system calls it does. So that's why they call it signal profiling, because that's why, what they use it for mostly. Uh, sig prof is signal for profiling. Signal profiling. For profiler, maybe sig profiler. That's what I read in the documentation anyway. So, um, so it's um, so we're gonna we're gonna put our callback sample here. We already know uh, what sample does, but but we'll get into be, to it um, a bit later. So we, we set our handler and we're gonna set a timer. So for this type of signal, we want to receive it in the first one in five milliseconds and the second and and, and get it in the interval of five milliseconds. Um, 
And this is also something new that I wasn't familiar with. There is a module call at exit that you can register a callback. And you, you just re register a function there. And once the, the process exits, it's going it, to uh, execute this function. So we're going to nullify the timer to zero. So this is start. When, when our program starts, we're going to run this one. What, what the sample does, it, it receives this, the call stack from the, like, one of its, is one of its arguments. It's going to extract the stack. And then it's going to take the stack, right? The stack is, um, is a bunch of frame to where you, you're at. So it's going to look at all the frame, going to join them with a semicolon. And we're going to look at it actually here. I did an example. You can see it well enough. But I'll, but I'll uh, show it to you when we run it. And then it's going to take the current stack, the formatted one, and do, do a plus one on it. So each time our, our code reaches that stack, it's going to end. We're doing a sampling. We're going to add one to that, to that dictionary. And the third function is just to format it. So we're going to format our stack, uh, to, to format the result. Uh, the, the stack and the count for that stack, and we're going to print it. So, oh, no, well, this big LS doesn't, doesn't work. So, uh, let's run demo one. So, this, this is what we get. This is what I want, wanted you to see. So, we see that in our code, that maybe we should see the code again. Oh, we didn't see it yet. Maybe we should see it. Um, so what our code does, it just do power twice over two different numbers. And we can see here that the power, so, so it started with main right here. Then it does power 100, 100K, and it, two, and it sampled it 22 times. And the 200K, it sampled 63 times, which is pretty clear because it's a bigger number. It's harder to do, to do the uh, power on. So. Now, a really nice thing we can do with that is to use a flame graph uh, chart that can visualize it for us. So when I first saw it and how simple it is to create one, I was really, I don't know if excited, but it was really nice to see that. So I'm going to output what, what we just saw into flame graph. It's a tool by Brendan Gregg, uh, who's like a performance engineer. And then I'm going to send it to our browser. This creates an SVG file. And this SVG file um, shows us the, where we spend time. So, of course, it's, you see it's with percentage, it's um, re uh, relative to the whole program. Like, we don't know the exact time, but it's relative. So, we can see, we can see it's relevant, like the, um, the uh, you know, how, how they compare the different parts of the program, the, the relation between the different parts of the program with that. But this is a pretty simple program, right? So it's not, a, it's not that exciting. But here we have a more complex one, demo2.py, which is pretty simple as well, but it has a lot of function calls. So it does a URL request to python.org. It grabs some peps, save them, write them to temporary files, and uh, does it four times for four different peps. So what, what we're doing here, we're calling the S profiler start, right? We're calling the main, and then we're printing out the stats. So if we're just going to run it like, um, like this, connected, OK. So we're downloading the different peps to our local, uh, to our local machine. And now we can see the profiling output, which is very, very unclear, right? So we can throw this into our flame graph. And now we can see our whole stack. It's a, it's a little odd to see it on such a big string. Uh, maybe we can, this, this is the way it looks in general, like uh, the big picture. And we can see the different part of our request, where, where have it been? So we can see that the URL open part took quite a while, and actually writing the file didn't take so long, right? Um, we can even click, we can even click a certain stack, 
And then we can see just relative to it, it's the 100% uh, for us, and we can see everything relative to it. So we can see how long the SSL took. And final example, which is really nice as well, we can only always search it. By the way, this is an SVG, and I didn't know SVGs can do that. But it's really cool. So it can do the, we can find the actual objects we're looking for to, to profile. And I think, I think we are done here. We have, this is the reference, so just talk a bit about that. Julia Evans uh, has a really nice blog post about it. Uh, Nihilus created their own profiler in production instead of using New Relic or Datadog or something like that, which is a really nice read. And Flame Graph by Brendan Gregg and Python documentation. A lot of it was here. And that's it. Thank you. Uh, the question was, what would we use to do memory profiler? And I think there's, there's a memory profiler in the standard library uh, that you can just use, and it shows you it works. In the standard library, there's a mem profile. You can use it to see, to see your memory footprint. Yes. Uh, another question? What do you mean? What, the question was, how does it work with try and accept? It works, it works just as a try and accept is regular code for us. You, you can see it. You can catch an exception. It doesn't, doesn't really matter for us. Okay, cool. Well, thank you.